Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and now and today I'm delighted and privileged to welcome a good friend, a fellow IPO, an accomplished entrepreneur from Israel, Mr. Ran Sharon. Ran, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. It's, it's such an honor. It's a... Uh... Again, bravo for the initiative. I, I love it. Thank you. How can I help, my friends? <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll first do our conversation and then I'll reach out to for help. So Ryan is the founder and CEO of Clariter, a global clean tech innovation company. He's an entrepreneur, innovator, and businessman. He lectures on entrepreneurship, green economy, impact, and effective networking. And as I just mentioned, he's a fellow member of the YPO. So Ryan, let's start talking about Clariter. Tell me about this venture. You know, uh, maybe before Alex share with you a bit about the story, because we have sure. a different way of how we started. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to put in a layman terms what Clarity does. We take plastic waste that no one wants mm -hmm. and we transform it into products that everybody needs. Mm -hmm. Now we'll go back and uh, our story started around 2003. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, in, a, back at that time, I was in Warsaw, sitting in my office, and came a young Polish scientist to see me, and he said that he uh, found a way to take plastic waste and to transform it into mineral oil. I, I didn't know what's mineral oil, and he said, uh, you know, my chemistry is, mm -hmm. sucks till today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he said, you know, you will know it like a baby oil. And for me, being a, not an environmentalist, but it was a, a, an innovator and, and a disruptor, mm. the concept of taking something which has low value or zero value, and it is considered to be a waste and mm. transforming it into a product that people needs, that blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And over the years, you know, uh, we emerged and uh, we have developed, but I would say the core of our stuff, uh, taking stuff that no one wants and transforming it to issues that everybody needs that stayed. I will mention that this young Polish scientist, uh, when he came to see me, was 84 years old. Wow. <laughs> and you know, when, it, when an 84 year old and before Clariter, I co-founded the first incubator in Central okay. Eastern Europe. So mm -hmm. he came to see the guy that knows how to invest in startups mm -hmm. and to develop startups. Mm -hmm. And I also learned, you know, when you are 84 years old, uh, People say, oh, uh, you, you know, there is no use for you. You're mm -hmm. too old. Mm -hmm. I discovered that you can be an entrepreneur also at the age of 84. Wonderful. That you can walk until your age of 94. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also discovered, again, the concept of no one wants to what everybody needs. Mm -hmm. So no one wanted an old guy, mm -hmm. but everybody needed his in invention and uh, his concept. And this is how we started. Amazing. And over the years, uh, you know, we developed and today we are a global company. And if you want, we can share later what we do and where we go. No, no, we'd like to. And I'm going to ask you. But, you know, okay. whenever I talk to people who are in the plastics business, uh, and I often tell them, you know, look at what you're doing to landfills, etc. Now I know, you you know, what you are doing in Clariter. And I'll send a, reach out to you. But tell me, what have been the challenges of managing plastic waste in most countries? You know, I, I can tell you that when we started, mm -hmm. uh, I, I looked at the situation and I saw that the world has a couple of challenges. Mm -hmm. Plastic waste started as a challenge, but it was small, but there was a challenge. People talked about this. Um, on the other hand, there was a lot of dependency on crude mm -hmm. and there was volatility in crude prices. You remember the time it moves above right. 100 and down right. and up and down. Mm -hmm. The volatility was very shaky to everybody, industry, and even uh, uh, consumers. Mm -hmm. And uh, environment was an issue, but it was a nice to have issue. It was not a must, and it was nice. Mm -hmm. So looking at, at, the, at, the, at that issue, quantum leap to today, you know, mm -hmm. the United Nations classified plastic waste as a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a global catastrophe and problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the other hand, COVID shows us, hey, we need plastic mm. because we have so many things that we use in, for protection, etc., that are made from plastic, the disposables, etc. So there is a combination from one side, the world is consuming a lot, mm -hmm. 
looking for alternative to plastics, I, I will say so, right. uh, not much recovering and creating recycling of that. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you know, plastic is growing more and more. And I would say, even you recycle, you're not really ending the life of plastic. Yeah. Plastic remains. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up in a landfill, it ends up in incineration, mm -hmm. in the sea, rivers, uh, and some of this is treated. Mm -hmm. A clarity sector is what we call uh, chemical recycling, okay. um, or what we actually call it, we call it chemical upcycling, okay. because we do not make old plastic to new plastic. Mm -hmm. There is one company, there is a company doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's not that we do plastic to fuel, mm -hmm. that is for the purpose of energy or purpose of, of uh, transportation. Right. Um, it's, it's we do the plastic that in the end, we can find in more than 1,000 products. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we do families of oils, mm -hmm. solvents, and waxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do FDA grade. That, again, our products can find from a, a simple degreaser that you clean your kitchen with. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find it in a candle. You can find it in, a, as I said, even in a baby oil or a vaseline. Mm -hmm. So these are products that people need. We also saw that plastic is, is a, from one side, it's a great container. Mm -hmm. But again, what do you do with it later? Correct. So in, in, we found a very old Jewish scholar, uh, Maimonides, that said that waste is actually a, mis a, 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 a waste is actually a misplaced uh, uh, is a thing that is misplaced. Mm -hmm. and, and because if in, instead of putting it in one, you place it in the right thing, it might be correct. Right. We look at waste as a misplaced resource. Okay. And uh, today, plastic is an issue, I agree, still dependent on volatility of, of uh, crude, but the solutions are not enough. Clarity is only one. I'm, we are more than welcoming many other companies to do. And Very interesting. So for our viewers and listeners, how large is the problem of plastic waste? You know what? Any number that I will throw, mm -hmm. It's nothing Not compared enough. to the to the you know it's it's huge uh, you know the, in the sea for example if I'm not mistaken there are five gyros where the uh, oceanuses are meeting the oceans are meeting and then you have like an island of flow of plastics yes. and uh, some say I did not see it personally that uh, but there are uh, islands of plastic the size of France wow. it's huge. Mm. Uh, one of the cool things that we did uh, with, the, with a certain NGO is uh, we collected plastic from the ocean mm -hmm. and we wanted to see can it fit our process. And uh, we told this NGO, bring us the most complicated plastic, the one, uh, there is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. And they brought fishing nets. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the ones who helped them to collect the fishing nets and plastic from the ocean was a group of surfers mm -hmm. that um, uh, were surfing and collecting. Mm -hmm. And we put the, uh, that pl plastic waste from the ocean inside our process. And uh, one of the things that we make is, is waxes. Mm -hmm. So uh, these waxes, we went to a manufacturer and that specialized in making waxes for surfers. Mm -hmm. So we made surfer wax and we gave it back to the, wow. to the NGO. Now, the beauty, if you think, from one side, we ended the life of plastic. Mm -hmm. We saved, you know, the, uh, the poor fish from eating plastics. Mm -hmm. So, but we ended the life of that. But we also created a product mm -hmm. that usually will come from crude and we, give it, we gave it to the same society that collected. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the ocean and the amounts of plastics we are having, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's really, it's in, uh, if I'll take only Israel, where I'm currently stationed, mm -hmm. uh, Cor Corin does not allow me to travel. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, when you look at Israel itself, the, we have almost a million ton per annum with a country of about 10 million people. Mm -hmm. It's a bit smaller than India, I believe. Uh, <laughs> yes. We have about 1 million tons of plastics that are suitable only for Clarita. Mm -hmm. And if you think that the Clarita facility per annum, mm -hmm. if you think that the Clarita facility is 60,000 tons per annum of plastic waste, Try to imagine how many facilities I can Absolutely. build in one country. Correct. But then, you know, we should spread it all over. But uh, I always, when people say about competitors, I say anyone who can handle mm. that problem, which is actually a great resource and transform it as an alternative to something else is more than welcome. And we will even assist and work together. Amazing. 
So, you know, uh, when I was reading about you, you are transforming plastic waste into white oil, paraffin waxes, and aliphatic solvents. And if you said your chemistry is weak, I didn't even pass my chemistry in school. But help me understand what kind of value adds are you doing and how are the, the, res, the, the what you're producing eco-friendly? Okay. Uh, you know, let's understand that the, this type of solvents, waxes, and oils, mm. uh, today, they're actually origins from crude. Mm. So the petrochemical industry pumping oil, it doesn't matter from the sea or from land, mm. pumping oil, refining it, and at the end, most of crude goes towards fuels. It mm. doesn't matter if it's a jet fuel or diesel, benzene, etc. that, you know, the ones that we use for transport. Right. And there, there is a sector, a, a certain part of the crude barrel that mm. goes into petrochemicals. Okay. The petrochemicals are from plastics, mm. but also uh, different types of things that when you look at the, a cleaning material at your home or a shampoo bottle, you see so many different names right. for the non-chemists between us. Right. Uh, these are usually petrochemicals. And uh, so just by the fact that we take one thing, which is the, the plastic that comes from crude mm. and we end the life of it. And then we also make another product that usually comes from crude, but we are not making it from new crude. By this, actually, we are creating a, a, a carbon negative environment. So Clarity is one of the few companies that by using and applying our technology, right. you actually create a negative uh, uh, CO2, which is good for the environment. Right. So that's one of the things that we do. And other stuff, here, I would say there is the direct ones, but they're also peripherals. Mm. You do, for society, you do anything from job creations to even stimulation of small, medium-sized enterprises. Mm. Now, I see the society and the support to society as a key for a sustainability and positive impact also on the environment. Mm. Uh, for the non-specialist among the audience, you know, the, the triangle of sustainability mm. is an economical impact, an environmental impact, and a social impact. Mm. Often people neglect one of these impacts, and then it can be like a philanthropy or others. I think that even when you help society with job creations, with the ability to, to think and create and do, mm. uh, you are also creating a positive and necessary impact on the planet. Look what COVID did to people on mental health. Mm. Put them back to work, they will be happy. Very well said. So one more question regarding clarity, and then I'll move to your next passion, which is the green economy. You know, this inc incredible technology, are you planning to license it out to other countries in the world or do it build it yourself? You know, so, so I'll say like this, you know, I was lucky and uh, uh, maybe it's before because my past experience or not, but mm -hmm. when we started Clarity, uh, I, we, we are assembled the team of investors slash partners. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were, some of them are even members of YPO, but a lot of them were, it was not just money. It was money plus a certain know-how. It doesn't matter if it was logistics or even banking or scrap industry, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so, and everybody agreed that this is a long-term thing and we should not create it based on a hype. Again, 2003 started almost mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so we never had the need to publish something and promise that we are going to try. No, we were, let's first see that we can develop this. And the first stage that we did, we took, we took the professor ID and uh, we checked the chemistry in the lab. Mm -hmm. And then we scaled it up and we created a pilot facility in Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, a pilot facility, it's like a big lab, but we had the entire process over there from hydrogen until, you know, end product. Hmm. And then uh, uh, we built a, an industrial scale plant, hmm. which is a, a 15,000 square meter facility, which is located in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And over there, it's a greenfield facility that, that we make everything on place. Mm -hmm. And we make, you know, thousands, hundreds and thousands of tons of, of uh, products, plastic waste coming in and products coming out. Mm -hmm. This is our demonstration facility, training facility. This is where we do sampling for potential future customers, etc. But it was not really made as a commercial facility. Okay. So our first one was the know-how one, we need to own it. Mm -hmm. Okay, And when we need to own it, we need to 
only because we want to learn from our mistakes, we want to develop, of course, over, so we want to protect our IP. Uh, when this one uh, brought the necessary information, we said, now it's time to move on. And now we are working on scaling up. Um, uh, and we are currently working on three facilities in the Netherlands, Poland, and Israel. Mm -hmm. Now we took a decision that we are preparing everything by ourselves. We work on permitting, engineering, site selection, securing the, the, the I would say, the, the supply chain of, of raw material, the waste. When it comes to us, it's already raw material. It's not mm. waste. Selling our product. So we, we are gearing up on so many elements. Mm. And uh, on a global level as a group, and also on territory level, Poland, Israel, and mm. For there, we are talking with potential partners okay. that we tell them, come and join us. Mm. But we are not stopping. We continue and we welcome others. Mm. We do have approaches from all over the world. People are saying, can you license the technology? I should wish to be true. Probably later. Okay. Uh, the, it's management attention. Mm. It's we want to really feel hundred percent okay that you know right. we work perfectly. Although we we mm. are very confident, but you know it's still chemicals and scaling up. It's also a challenge. Right. Um, but we took a different approach recently, and uh, some of this is already known. Where we told uh, strategic investors mm. uh, that uh, we were approached a lot by strategic investors. Strategic investor can be someone from pet chem industry, right. but yeah. it can be also a local entrepreneur that is very strong in an environment, a community. And we tell them, you know what, first come and join our holding. Mm. And we allow them to join as a tiny minority. Mm. And then we are developing with them a territory. Recently, we signed with a company called ACI. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a multinational company. And uh, uh, with them, they became a small shareholder in Claritel, but we are developing we are starting to develop facilities in Germany, in, uh, uh, in some places in the US. So the journey is going together. So licensing probably in the future. Today, we're saying anyone who wants, first come and join us on the top. So we will be aligned with our interest. And also then let's develop a territory or stuff that we can do with our products, like different blends or stuff that we can do with the raw material. Amazing, amazing. So, Ryan, uh, uh, you know what, Ashatush, I'll, I'll yeah. jump something. There is mm -hmm. one of my favorite quotes, it's something mm -hmm. that I learned in South Africa. There is a favorite quote that says, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go, to, you go together. Mm -hmm. If you want to handle a plastic pandemic, mm -hmm. if you want to handle a, such a demand for crude product and dependency on crude, mm -hmm. it's not to have one crusader that can save. The, the planet. No. And that's why we say, no, no, it's not just about us. Let's do it together. So I welcome people to join us. And I'm even ready to help others to be successful with knowledge, information, whatever we learn. Mm -hmm. it, there is a big demand and there is a big problem. Fascinating. So Ren, uh, you're very passionate about sustainability, about the UN SDGs, and you're already walking the talk with, with Clarita. Let's you know, talk to you a little bit about the green economy and you lecture on this subject also. For our viewers and listeners, tell me how do you define a green economy and what are the challenges the world faces? You know, the, I, I gave recently a lecture about the difference between clean tech and high tech. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. In my mind, uh, you know, we are a startup, a very old startup mm -hmm. that invested tons of money. We invested mm -hmm. only in R&D about 40 million euros. So it's a relatively a lot for a private company. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the thing, and before my experience, I was in a lot of what we call high tech. Mm -hmm. So in the high tech concept, you know, they, we all know the stories about two guys sitting in a, with a small computer in a basement of someone and becoming a Google. Correct. In clean tech and in green, it's more than two great guys. It's more than a professor. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need to have someone with the idea, but then you need to have people to support and help right. to develop the idea, but also how to work on this from various angles. The other uh, green, econ green tech and clean tech and others, they do take usually more time, mm -hmm. uh, but they are also, they will last longer. Mm -hmm. An app is something that tomorrow will be a better app. Mm -hmm. Technology, that like in industries or others will be probably for a long time. So, uh, and the second is 
when we started, the investors community was not there. I'm talking about there was more, more no VC to clean tech and green tech. I mean, even the term clean tech was not right. existing at the mm. time. Today, you can start to see angel investors. You can start to see CVC corporate venture capitals. You can okay. start to see the VCs. Mm. It's still a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say, uh, if you are an industrialist, I don't care which industry, Mm -hmm. Agree that a certain percent from your profits mm -hmm. will go, call it a brave capital, and invest it in uh, uh, stuff that has the triangle of sustainability, mm -hmm. the economical stuff you want to make money, the environmental stuff you want to make a better env environment, and that it's good for society. Mm -hmm. I think the, it will be an amazing return on investment. You know, uh, you mentioned about us talk, walking the walk. Mm -hmm. The truth, when we started, I was not a tree hugger. Mm -hmm. I would say also today I'm not a tree hugger, but don't tell it to anyone. <laughs> Some of my friends are tree huggers. Yes. Some of our employees. Um, but for me, it started because of the disruptive innovation. This okay. is what blew my mind away. And it's still my number one key here. Mm -hmm. I just realized that you can do it also by taking care of the environment and sustainability. The UN has what they call the SDGs. There are 17 SDGs. Yeah. You know, uh, I, recently, I, I, every year, I, I pledge and I sign a UN report. We make a UN report for Claudia. We meet 10 out of the 17 SDGs. Wow. And when I met with my sustainability director, and I said, did, why? How? And she said, you know, funny, we did not need to change anything. Mm. It was our DNA from the beginning. So if you're an entrepreneur and you are thinking about making your, a new venture, from the beginning, Plan. build it, well said. make it, break it, you know, with a good intention. If you're an existing company and you are doing a lot of, look at the SDGs of the UN, published 17. Uh, look at this and say, you know, this I can do better. This is a small change. Magic happens. Right. And uh, I, I think today it used to be nice to have. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of greenwash. People talked about green. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, investors market are saying we will not invest in a company that did not have an ESG plan and activity. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, the youngsters are looking saying, tell me what's good are you for the environment? Mm -hmm. You know, it's becoming a must and companies that will not adopt, I think will suffer and companies that will start, I tell them, start, do it properly. Well said. Do it, do it, yeah. Well said. So I know you've got to run, but I've got one last question. Uh, and then this is for the, the thousands of people who will watch our conversation. As someone who's been such a successful entrepreneur, what would your advice be to a young entrepreneur starting off on her or his journey? So I'll tell you one, I don't think that I'm a successful entrepreneur. Okay. But maybe, I, maybe funny, mm -hmm. uh, I, will, I think fear. Mm -hmm. I'll explain. Mm -hmm. uh, people ask me, you know, oh, you're almost 20 years old as a company, you raise so much money and you're building. And we are still a startup. Mm -hmm. We are not generating real revenues. Mm -hmm. You know, we are going to, there is a lot of risk associated. Uh, there are many things that, you know, management of growth is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I found that in, whenever there is a fear issue, you know, what will happen tomorrow? Mm. If there will be a problem, God forbid something happens, COVID or non-COVID, uh, if I'll fail, I found that instead of coming and saying, oh, I need to be afraid, I should, you know, I need to, okay, let me wait and see. Mm. I found that the best is embrace your fear and use what Master Yoda said, do or do not, there is no try. Don't try to do stuff. Oh, I try to give him a call. I try to make a change. I No. You can do a change and you can fail. Mm. If you are ready with yourself to fail and to look yourself in the mirror every morning and say, if the company is closed today, will I be able to look myself in the mirror tomorrow and say, did I do everything in my ability? And the answer is yes, go and do it. If you realize that not, and it's because of fear, often it's because of fear, shame, ego, whatever, if you're able to come and say, big deal, I might fail, but I will be, I, I can also succeed. And then what will happen? My advice is don't be afraid, breathe, take the time, 
and just do. Don't try to do. Wonderful. Ren, on that note, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure connecting with you again. Such a pleasure meeting you and talking to you again. Thank you for the incredible knowledge you have given to me and to all our viewers and listeners on sustainability, on the amazing work Clarator is doing, and a little bit on the green economy. You and I have to talk again. Thank you again. 100%. Anytime. Satish, thank you very much. Thank you. Salute and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.